Hi! On this video, I'm going to talk to you about the new combined First Breath and My Baby and Me data forms. These forms are new to everyone. Unless you were at the statewide meeting this year, you probably have not seen them yet. But for those of you who have been using the combined data forms, these are going to look very familiar. However, there are still some changes that we have made that you should notice. We are going to use this video to explain some of the changes we've made and hopefully answer some questions that you might have. We are asking that you recycle the old forms as soon as you receive the new data forms. You can either download the new forms from your First Breath newsletter or wait until you receive them by mail. But either way, please resist the urge to use the old forms by getting rid of them in advance and replacing them with the new versions. The consent forms you have are fine to use until you run out. So why the new forms? By combining the First Breath and My Baby and Me forms, we are hoping to make data collection easier for our providers who provide both programs. We also want to encourage all of our providers who do First Breath to do My Baby and Me as well, if they have the capacity. We are also always trying to improve our program and find new ways to reach out to First Breath Moms. We have added questions to these forms that will give us a better idea of how to adapt our program to fit their needs. I'll talk about these new questions in a bit. These are all the new forms. You'll see that the formatting is a little different on each page but we haven't added any new forms to complete during the process. As always, there is the consent form, the client information form, the enrollment form, all to fill out at the first session, and then the prenatal form, postpartum, and change of status form. The procedure checklist is, as always, for your use only. If you have not seen the combined forms yet, this will look different. The checklist of activities for first breath is on one side, and the checklist for My Baby and Me is on the other. If you are not at My Baby and Me site, or if your patient is only enrolled in first breath, then you only have to worry about the first breath section. And that's the rule of thumb for the rest of these forms, too. This is the new consent form. We've shortened up the wording a bit. You'll see at the bottom the client has the choice to participate in First Breath or My Baby and Me or both, simply by checking the box for that program. If your clinic has been trained in My Baby and Me, then your client also has the choice to participate in My Baby and Me, which she can check here. Otherwise, if your site is a First Breath participating site only, make sure that your client checks only the first breath box on the form. The client information form. This form looks quite different from the older versions. We have added a few more questions about demographics and reformatted to reduce the number of pages. It is one page. You'll notice that we are asking for their Medicare number, if applicable. There's also a place for clients to say whether or not they are interested in joining our texting program or our private Facebook group. If she is, make sure she in includes her cell phone number above so we can get her started. This is page one of the enrollment form. The new enrollment form has both the first breath and my baby and me questions, which is why it's gonna look a little longer than the older form. There are also some added questions about well-being at the beginning to be filled out every time. Again, please complete only the first breath section for first breath clients and the My Baby and Me section for My Baby and Me clients. If a woman is enrolled in both programs, obviously please complete both sections. We have some tips on how to reduce the amount of time spent on these surveys. The first suggestion is to just have the client complete the, the form on her own. If this is not an option or if you prefer to complete the forms together, our other suggestion is to not read all the response options for some of the questions. 
For instance, you probably need to provide response categories for questions one and two. Though you could ask the question, see what the client says, and then follow up with one of the responses to see if that accurately captures her experience. For example, you could ask, during the past week, have you felt sad, unhappy, or hopeless? If the client says yes, you could respond with, how often? Do not read all the response options for questions three and four. Instead ask, are there people in your life who give you the comfort and support you need? If the client says yes, ask who? And then check the appropriate boxes. Similarly, in question four, circle the appropriate range based on the client's response instead of reading all the options out loud. You will need to read the options for question six. Have, have you ever used smokeless tobacco products? If the client says yes. You do not need to read the options for questions seven and eight. Simply check the appropriate box based on the client's response to the question. And for question 11, read the options only if the client needs more clarification. This is page two of the enrollment form. You will need to read the options for question 12. Have you ever used any of the following medications? For questions 16 through 20, you may need to provide response cues for questions just to make sure that the client is thinking on the right track. For example, question 17, how do you feel about quitting smoking and or staying quit? The client may not know how to answer that question until you prompt them with something like, you want to quit and stay quit for good? Or just until after the baby is born? Page three of the enrollment form starts out with my baby and me question. You may need to provide response cues to the first three questions in the My Baby and Me section. Page four is the last page of the enrollment form. This is the provider only section at the end of each survey that should be completed at all visits, regardless of which program the client is in. You'll see there's an added question for CO results which, if that is not something you test for, you do not have to answer. You can just circle not applicable. Please do not forget to complete this form and send it to us. The next form is the prenatal follow-up form. You'll see it's a bit longer. We've added questions about well-being at the top, just as on the enrollment form. Most questions are the same as or very similar to questions asked on the enrollment form, so you can use the same strategy on all the forms. As on the enrollment form, there is no need to read the responses for questions three through five, but you may need to provide parameters for questions six through 10 by listing the options. On page two of the prenatal form, there are a few more first breath questions, and then the My Baby and Me section starts. Page three is the provider only question. This is on a separate page again, but please make sure to fill it out and return it to us every time. The postpartum form. The postpartum for a form has an additional four well-being questions at the beginning. You may or may not need to provide response cues for the first two questions, depending on the response you get. Use the same strategy for questions five through nine as you used on earlier surveys. For example, question seven, you could say, are there people in your life who give you the comfort and support you need? And then follow up with who if they answer yes. On page two, you may want to hand the survey to the client for question 10. This question provides an excellent visual representation of the client's smoking history while in the program. So we encourage you to use this question as a discussion tool. 
again, use a similar strategy for questions 11 through 14 as you used on earlier surveys. On page three of the postpartum form, there are a couple more first breath questions and then the My Baby and Me questions start up. Please make sure to turn in this form even if your client is just enrolled in first breath. And then lastly on page four of the postpartum form are the provider only questions, just for you to answer after your last visit with your patient. And then very lastly is the change of status form, which we haven't changed much. Still fill out this form if the client's information has changed or if their enrollment status in first breath or my baby me has changed. Also, there's a place for you to record if you referred them to AOTA, AOTA services on this form. And that is it for the new forms. Some brief FAQs you might have. If you are wondering how to transition to using the new data forms with a client who is already enrolled in first breath, it'd be best to next time you see that person, go ahead and use the appropriate new form. So if you met with a client last month and filled out the consent client info and enrollment form last time, pick up the new prenatal form to fill out at this visit. No need to resubmit information that you've already given us. If you are wondering how you can submit the forms to us, you can mail or fax them. There's no longer any online data entry system. We are working on a way so that you can submit fillable PDFs to us. We will let you know when this is available. As far as receiving copies of the new forms, you can download the new forms directly from the February newsletter to begin using right away, or by the end of the month, you should receive physical copies of the new forms in the mail. Look for those coming your way soon. Again, please discard your old forms once you have received your new ones. This will help us a lot as we transition to a new database. If you have any questions, please contact your health educator, Chelsea or Carl. They should be able to answer all your questions about the new data forms and help you in the transition as you begin to use them. Thank you for watching.